So, you remember uh, those weird games you would play on the playground where you'd put out your hands and somebody would, would go around from hand oh, to yeah, hand? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Are those region-specific? I believe they are. What did you play with them? Uh, so we had uh, we had bubblegum, bubblegum in a dish. How many pieces do you wish? And whoever you got landed on would name yeah, you'd say a, a number, number. and yeah. then they go around and whoever got hit was out, right? Yeah. Um, and then we had Inca Binka bottle of... I, can't I didn't remember. have that one. I, I had the bubblegum one, one because okay. I think the bubblegum one was on TV in some television show, but... I think that Inca Binka one, I've never heard that one. Okay. I can't even remember how, it, yeah, how the rest of I it goes. Yeah, I can already remember that I didn't have that one. Yeah. So, uh, because I found it remarkable, I was actually researching um, uh, Pokemon glitches okay. the other day. Because we're going to come back to that. All right. Uh, and I just, I, a lot of the ones that I was reading up on, a lot of the, um, not glitches, rumors... Oh, yeah, like Pokegons? Yeah. A lot of that stuff, you know, back in mm-hmm. 1999. 1999, yeah, that would have been the time. The internet was not no, what I, we have now. I didn't have the internet. I, I yeah. knew friends who had the internet, and I looked up to them because they had the internet. I don't think I even understood what the internet was. All I knew was it was a thing that you learned stuff from. That's all I knew. I thought I knew it was like a book. Okay. That, that was constantly being updated, or like a magazine. The internet was like a magazine, because I knew I knew like tips and tricks. That makes sense. And so what uh, what confounds me about that whole ordeal is that a lot of the ones I was listening to and reading about, you know, listening to YouTubers talk about, reading about, a lot of those rumors are stuff that I heard on the playground too. How does that stuff travel? Kids just make it up. But I think a lot of them came from. Just like the, like, because I think it was natural for a lot of kids to think of an evolution of Charizard. Yeah, but, but the fact that a kid in my playground told me that I could get Yoshi. Oh, yeah. Well, Yoshi which was, was in a magazine. Was it? Yeah, Yoshi was oh, that's printed right. in IGN. Because right. that is the dumbest thing yeah. I've ever heard in my but, life. Um, did you have a kid tell you about, like, the names of the Poke Gods? Uh, the Poke Gods are stuff I learned about later. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I also think that there was probably, you know, every elementary school was probably, like, at least 500 kids. Maybe, yeah. I and, mean, it's five grades, yeah, so. Yeah, like, there was probably one kid who had the internet. And I think it was safe to assume that if that kid had access to the internet at home, they probably liked Pokemon. And so, I think that there were kids on the internet when they shouldn't have been, most likely, <laughs> but kids on the internet looking at Pokegod stuff, and I think that's how it traveled mostly. Like, do you remember any of those rumors from you when you were a kid? Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, except for, aside from Yoshi, um, there there were some. I, there there is a handful of like nonsensical whatever. Of course, Pokemon evolving another yeah. time, and yeah, I guess I guess it's just natural for kids to make that stuff up. So yeah. well, because like, I had Moo Moo at my school. Like, people thought that there was going to be a cow Pokemon in Gen 2 named Moo Moo. I don't know, I don't know if you heard about that one. Not Moo Moo, no. No, or um, they called... Because Don Fan was in the opening to the first movie. Right. We didn't know its name. They called it Pan Pan. Did you hear that? No. Okay. So I think a lot of them still are regional. And I think even when you say regional, you can even get down to, like, school-specific. Like... Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's crazy. There's probably a wealth of people out there with different names for the Poke Gods because right. those were what the kids at their school came up with. Yeah, or different little dumb rhymes for their hand bouncing games yeah. at school. Definitely, I didn't hang out with kids who played those games. Oh, <laughs> I only know Bubblegum. I I think I sat around for that one once. Most of my recesses were spent with the kid who had internet telling me about SpongeBob episodes that haven't come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I got spoiled on the camping episode like a month in advance and I was like so excited for it for no reason because I was in fourth grade and I had nothing else to be excited about. Sure. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. Huh. So, the other big thing oh. that I remember from grade school is um, 
you know, imagination games, okay, obviously. Yeah. You know, you and your friends go out and you pretend that Pokemon yeah. are real or, or you pretend you're, to you're be... Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah. you pretend to be superheroes, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just can't help but giggle at uh, Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I've never made that connection before. We... All we did, all we did was put numbers and figures. We just put numbers so that they would help us tell a story because otherwise we would always win. Right. Because if you don't have, in, in Dungeons and Dragons, if you never had to roll for anything, there would never be any conflict. Because <laughs> the conflict comes from you rolling poorly. Right. So it helps tell the story. <laughs> like, holy shit. I can't believe D&D is just pretend, but like, but balanced. <laughs> and I can almost, you know, that's one of those things where I was, I've always, I've always kind of tried to make, you know, cause kids will get into fights yeah. over that stuff. Kids will get into fights. Oh, I, I hit you with my death beam. No, I dodged oh, no, at the I last have, minute. I have a, I have a shield. Yeah. I have, <laughs> I have a shield that blocks death beams. I have my, my dinosaur, which eats force field dogs <laughs> yeah. uh, or whatever it is in yeah. Toy Story. And so... I remember as a kid, essentially, accidentally almost making Dungeons and Dragons. Oh my god. Because I was attempting to put some form of rhyme and reason, but I also hated math, so yeah. it was doomed to fail. But it wasn't, yeah, I did the same thing. I was the kind of kid who, like, when we were playing Smash Brothers, and everybody wanted to be, like, super, so everyone's super powerful, I think I picked, like, oh, I'll be, I think I was like, I'll be Mario. <laughs> and then everyone was like, I'm stronger than you. And I'm like, yeah, you are, but, like, now I'm going to get a red shell. And so we, I tried to tell a story, uh, but, like, at, no one else wanted to. They just wanted to pretend to fight. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember what it, what it eventually boiled down to was just I realized that I had to play the villain who loses every single time or I wouldn't have fun. <laughs> Oh my god, you're just a DM? I was just a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the DM is just someone who plays, like, the villain so that everybody else can win. Right, and that's, that's, that's the mentality, right? Holy you shit. Are, you are the host, and so you have, your job, in you're order s- to make a party full of people who just want to be cool and do cool laser beams and shoot fire and cast spells and be overpowered, the only way you can make that game fun is, is if you're if, the villain. And you have to... You have to manually lose. create all of the obstacles for these people. But you have to make them balance so that it's it's hard, but they win. <laughs> right. And you're having fun because you're doing what you set out to do, and they're having fun because they set out what they had to do. Oh my god. So number one, that's why it's important to always give your DMs a break by being the DM sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Because holy shit, they get fun they, they have fun losing and that's sad to think about. <laughs> Been doing it since grade school, baby. So give them a break. And number two don't get so invested in your characters that you aren't too upset when they die because I think character death can actually be very fun. Um, like, before we I go, I launch into this tangent. Uh, this is the It's Still Cool podcast. Uh, I'm Tony. And I'm Jesse. And in this podcast, we talk about stuff that still remains cool, whether it be Pokemon or the idea of pretend but balanced <laughs> called Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so, um, the second point, uh, it being... A very cool idea, actually, to have a character die sometimes in Dungeons & Dragons. Um, So I play Pathfinder with a group. Pathfinder is essentially Dungeons & Dragons for the uninformed, but with a slightly different rule set. Uh, We had two characters die on the same night, and it was probably the most memorable experience we've had as a group. Uh, One of them was my character, and to be selfish and frank, I killed her because I didn't want to play her anymore. Hell yeah. Uh, I, I... Our... DM homebrewed a cool shadow person race for me to be, so I wanted to be a cool shadow person. Uh, the character, the character I was playing was this human bard cleric thing. She was like, uh, she grew up as a slave runaway. She escaped from slavery, and so she just wanted to help people escape from slavery and sing. But she was horrible at everything, and that was kind of her point. She wasn't very good at doing anything. Uh, so during a big boss encounter, I had her cast a spell that made herself explode. Oh. <laughs> As, like, a sort of, like, final blow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a goodbye Mr. Tian moment. Oh, no. <laughs> but the boss ended up being resistant to fire, so she didn't actually do any damage. So it was in vain. And I think that makes it better. Because she had no idea. Just like she would have. Right. And then uh, wow. someone else in the party who was, like, her best friend was upset at this fact and sacrificed himself as well trying to murder the boss. Oh. <laughs> so we oh, had no. two people die. 
and it was very fun and memorable. So if you guys are playing Dungeons and Dragons or anything equivalent, don't get too upset if your character dies because it can make it better. And as a DM, um, so, <laughs> uh, and this this is, um, here we go. This is the episode where I get to talk about my it, beloved it, Rudiger Tiddlewink. Yes. So I had to quit a campaign I was in for two years because of a very uh, unflexible new job oh, that I God. got. And that wound up being the job that made me leave bartending altogether um, mm -hmm. after a year. So, Rudiger Tiddlewink was my gnome artificer. Uh, a, a being so thoroughly obsessed with mimics that my GM wound up retroactively working the, like, biology and history of mimics into our campaign. Very good. And uh, he had to, he had, because there's not a lot of lore on mimics no, officially. No, they just kind of exist. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so... Whoops, actually, our whole universe is centered around Mimics now. <laughs> so this particular group, though, they have a, a number of game masters and a number of players, and they basically... They rotate. And every game is in the same continuity. Yes. So it's all on a timeline. So Rudiger winds up having to die after attempting to save the life of the Alpha Mimic, which <laughs> is a thing my game master, I think, made up. And Probably. then worked into our story, right? Mm -hmm. And so Rudiger dies protecting the Alpha Mimic, and in his death, the, the Raven Queen um, announces that as the only being who ever came to about, cared about them, I dubbed the Rudiger Tiddlewink, God of Mimics. Oh. And so my, my, my game master loved Rudiger so much that he adopted Rudiger as an NPC deity mm -hmm. that he could use in other campaigns from that point forward. And so Rudiger still pops up in other campaigns, even though I haven't played with this group in probably over a year. You are the speed wagon of this group's universe. Yeah, yes, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Uh... <laughs> so uh, point A to what I was saying, character death can sometimes be a very good part of any storytelling device and it's not all about i want to do the big hit with my sword or shoot a big fireball yeah that being said that's why i killed my character boots so oh, i could be was boots her name was boots uh because she had really her, her one defining trait was that she had huge boots amazing and she loved she loved exploring uh, so uh, was she a dora the explorer reference yes <laughs> <laughs> that was the initial thought um so yeah her name was boots her real name was winifred uh, but she only told one person that before she died. Oh, no. And it was that guy who died after her. Oh, no! <laughs> so uh, no one else knew Winifred. Uh, they just knew Boots. But I killed Boots so I could be a cool spellcaster shadow person who threw fireballs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, we've had um, we've had players, too, in this group where somebody came in and they're like, Oh, I'll bring my character from yep. another campaign yep. who I love. Uh-oh. Uh and I don't know if that's just the rules, but that almost is never a good thing. It, it never <laughs> works. No, it, it, it doesn't. The, the character is never going to be as cool as you think they are. and They're um, going to be detached from their context. So detached. Uh, it's not like Smash Brothers. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Mind you, the there was one instance of it where the character in question worked very hard to create a relationship with my character All not right. Rudiger different yeah a different character um and uh and it sort of worked but we wound up having to kill the character off because of how detached okay, and incoherent yeah. it all was uh i mean yeah like if you're using if you're taking a character that's in media res out of one universe or game and putting them into another that's not how it works. <laughs> that being said, if you have an idea for a character, so like Boots is a character that like I've used in different campaigns, but every time I start her off from zero. Right. So she's not the same Boots. She's just like, I took this blank copy of Boots and put her in this game and this game, and we'll see how she does. Yeah. <laughs> it's like starting from Pokemon. It's like you always get Bulbasaur, yeah. but it's not the same exact Bulbasaur. <laughs> yes, after after generation one, it's impossible yes. for it to be the after, same Bulbasaur. Yeah, so or improbable, I guess. It, yeah, I guess technically it's possible, but yeah, so it's not. It's it's like that. So you can do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're just gonna take your character in media res from their story, plop them in another, and say, "Oh, they're so cool, they've done all this stuff," the rest of those characters in that story will be like, "Excuse me, who?" 
Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Uh, I can see the appeal of having made a character that you're very proud of and wanting them to continue on. I had, um, when this particular group started doing D&D, it was a bunch of stop and start campaigns, and I had really wanted to play that first character I made. Fortunately, he was a deva, a reincarnating angel, so I could just continue (laughs) to play him, because he wouldn't have any memories. Nope. Um... And he, it literally two different times, it never picked up fast past the first couple of sessions. So oh, my no. Deva is just cursed to, to remain <laughs> forever. Like I've never, I've never tried to bring him back. Cause it's like, I, I, I've lost my enthusiasm. Yeah, There's more yeah. than Rudiger came along and it was ultimately a more interesting concept. Yeah. No, I definitely feel that. I've also had characters where I kind of lose the motivation to play them. Um, and then, you know, there is something to be said about having a character that's, like, long-lived and you're proud of and has a lot of history in the campaign. But, yeah, like, let them stay there. Let them live in their own context. Actually, now that I'm remembering back on it, I think I think that player put this character in our campaign to die. I think this was going to be her final resting place. Oh, okay. And that that wound up making an outsider kind yeah. of the centerpiece of a lot of plot. Yeah, that's, that's like making your, your character the Mary Sue. Like, I am the chosen one. I have to die here. It's, it, I'm chosen, <laughs> mythical chosen one by the box beaters. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give it to our game master. They worked really hard to work her backstory into the ongoing lore. Because at that point, we were playing a sci-fi campaign. Yeah. Uh, and so there was lots and lots of, you know, space. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like there's too much of it. Yeah. So, so it all worked. We could make up whatever we wanted. We wound up flying to uh, flying to an ancient planet, and it wound up having a temple to Rudiger Tittlewink in it. Hey! So, there <laughs> and, you my, go. and my game master sprung that on me. By oh. by the way, I had no idea. Yeah. This is after. This is yeah, literally way, millions of years after Rudiger's after, death. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That's hilarious. So speaking of of context, speaking of letting things stay in their own context, right? This is kind of what I wanted to talk about today, surprisingly. Oh, um, we did I it. really like when a world fleshes itself out and has and creates its own context for things. Um, so it's been on my mind because recently I've been playing the game Binding of Isaac. I don't know how familiar you are with it. I played the board game. Interesting. <laughs> That's an interesting way to be introduced to that universe. I was aware of it. You know, I'd, I'd worked at a gaming bar for two years, yeah. mind you. I watched people play Binding of Isaac ad nauseum, but I never digested anything of it. All you right. Know? So for those listeners who may be unaware, it's a roguelike, which means every time you start it, it's going to be a little different. But there's progression that remains. Like, you unlock an item forever. So you have the chance of getting that item once you've unlocked it. But every run is going to be different. Uh, essentially, you're a kid. You're running from your catholic mom who wants to kill you because god told her to do it so that's it it's, that's what the game is about yep she's no wonder all the imagery is so horrifying yeah the imagery is like pretty gross and horrifying it's not like scary because it's done in a very cartoon style but the implications of everything are pretty horrific but there's a lot of world building in this game everything is either like religious themed things that a young kid would have or like cheeky references to other video games Like, there's a mushroom item called Magic Mush that gives you all your stats up because it's like a power-up mushroom from Mario. Mm. Or there's a green mushroom that gives you an extra life, like Mario, you know? Or there's, like, a Pac-Man item that makes all the enemies turn blue and you can eat them. Oh. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so it's... Power Pill is the most overpowered power-up. Yeah, Power Pill's pretty great. So, So, anyways, but those are the three things that Isaac rests on. And it doesn't stray from that context. Now, it gets kind of redundant with items sometimes. And, like, there are lots of items that just give you the power of flight. But they're all... I don't care that they're redundant because they help flesh out the world more. Mm. Like, one is demon wings because it's religious themed. Or one is, like... (laughs) I guess the other item type that uh, Isaac gets is, like, a macabre item. Like, a a torture implement. Like there or or something that kills someone, like there's an item that is a noose that's called transcendence, and you get to fly. <laughs> <laughs> that's really dark. Yeah, it's really dark, but also like I, it kind of makes sense, I guess. <laughs> but like there's redundancy in these items, and I don't care that there's redundancy in the items because it helps fill out the world a little more. It helps enforce the context of the game. Hmm. 
Likewise, this is why people... And I'm going to bring it back. We mentioned it at the beginning of the episode. This is why everybody got mad at Dexit. Because it removed a lot of the context of the world. It's mm. like, hey, you know all these guys that exist that really flesh out this world that we've created? What if we got rid of like half of them? Yeah, you, <laughs> you run the risk of taking full animal representation out of pokemon like you, you know you find it weird how like there's a whole town about like farming and raising animals and the cow isn't there because the cow is straight up not programmed into the yeah, game yeah because they just removed it weird huh yeah <laughs> it that's that's why it made everybody so upset it's not about a lack of content or they're taking things away from us well i guess it is for those who are like upset about that kind of thing I was upset about it because, like, I and really invested in this world, and you just took away a lot of the context from it, and you're telling me just to be happy with it. And I, it's really hard for me to, like, give up things I'm really invested in in that way. And likewise, you're going to spend 20 years making this huge world, and you're just going to remove all the context from it. And I think that's why people get mad at Sonic, too. Those are, you know, the two staples we have to mention every time on this podcast. Every single episode. Every we can't single escape. Episode. We can't escape it. But... The, the games after Heroes kind of were like, you can kind of put them wherever you want. Yeah, I I would I would argue that from after 06. Yeah, that's true, because they didn't still, silver. And 06 still holds on to, like, gun and that's themes true. from the yeah. previous games. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, like, when does Unleash take place? Uh, Doesn't matter. Here's Colors. Uh, uh, colors before, for the... Before, before uh, Forces... Yeah. But anytime, when does Forces happen? Uh, and sometime after Colors, does it happen before Unleashed? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like these are the kinds of things that, like, and, and even Mario, like, let's talk about Mario for a second, right? Oof, dangerous topic. Yeah, I'm about to, like, I guess I am approaching dangerous waters, but, like, Mario doesn't need that context because, like, from the get go, they've kind of established that Mario was, like, a play. That Mario has all these characters and then they all come together and like put on this big show for you. And then they have like regular lives that they go back to after. Like go-karting. Yeah, like go-karting or playing tennis or golf or whatever or having parties. Like, <laughs> if, if that's how you want to define Mario Party. Like, like that's why no one bats an eye when Bowser's like gigantic in Mario Galaxy or Sunshine. Because like he's really big in this play for some reason. And also Luigi isn't here but like whatever after the play everybody goes home and man luigi's there he just wasn't here for this one <laughs> but no one gets upset about like the mario continuity right because they're yeah yeah you're right because like, early on there was established that there is one and they don't want to try to make one yeah but like in contrast with these other series that we always rest our laurels on like sonic and pokemon they wanted to establish continuities for these series but then they like drop it then they're like, eh, actually, maybe not. Yeah, sunshine to galaxy, and then... Eh, mm, mm, uh, uh, whatever. They'll, they'll have, like, a cheeky reference. Like, hey, look, this galaxy has the Piantas in it. That's fun. This galaxy looks like a level from Mario 64. Cool. Next game. <laughs> but in Sonic, they tried to have a continuity. They they do callbacks like that, and like not just callbacks, but like it's a plot point, like it's a plot point that there are clones of chaos that die in a cutscene in Sonic Forces. <laughs> it's like a it's a plot point that you know Grimsley is here in Alola for some reason. I would hardly call that a plot point. He gives you the, the Sharpedo ride. Oh, yeah. He does. I don't even. <laughs> oh no it was so it was so quick it was so short i Alola, literally did Alola. not remember <laughs> yeah right uh it certainly all came together didn't it <laughs> oh my god shout out to shout out to maybe we'll have him on the podcast someday yeah that'd be cool i mean he's not doing anything is he not he's just making videos well yeah that's something yeah i mean like it's more than we're doing we don't even have video we're just the audio not yet <laughs> <laughs> If you want video, tell us. We'll, we'll buy a camera with donated money that you donate to us so we can buy a camera. Yeah, check out our p p p Patreon. And, uh, um... Just email us some money. Ah, yeah. <laughs> the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I'll, I'll print it out. <laughs> Fax us a dollar. Fax us some dollars and some pizza rolls, please. 
<laughs> you can fax pizza rolls? Yeah, if you want a pizza roll, email me at my web zone. It's still coolcast at gmail.com. I'll fax you a pizza roll. <laughs> <laughs> I am shamelessly stealing this joke. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the... Um, what is the name? I'm blanking on it. The Mr. Plinkett reviews of Star, Star Wars. Yes. Yeah. Okay. At the, the end of one of them, he's like, if you want a pizza roll, email me at my web zone. I'll fax you a pizza roll. Oh, so we'll mention Mr. Plinkett by name, but we won't mention Loxton. There he is. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I was blanking on his name or anything. How is uh, How are these references disrupting the context of our podcast? I'm not sure. I mean, we're all... I guess we're all kind of bringing it together every episode, am I right? Uh, we're so sorry. We're so sad for you, Loxton, that that didn't happen. I am actually pretty upset that that didn't happen. For I know. Him. That's like... Okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay. All right. I'm never going to get another chance to talk about talk this. Talk about it. So here we go. Um, and this, this... I'll connect it back somehow. I'll try. We'll do it. So... <sighs> okay. So when Loxton went on that big thing okay. about it all coming together, all right, right? There, I started to notice a really weird pattern. Okay. Of a, uh, you know, it's I guess it's not a weird pattern. It's a pattern. But there was this recurring pattern in fiction, and when you need stability and you need a world and you need stuff, there's going to be patterns that emerge. Yep. So around this time. Bionicle's reboot was happening. All right. And also Game of Thrones was going on. Yeah. And I'm about to marry these three topics. All right. So, Bonkle. So, Go Bionicle's <laughs> reboot focused around, you know, it was, air quotes, a soft reboot. Yeah. Oh, everything before still happened, and this is just like the Star different. Trek movies. It's just something different. Yep. And so, it opens up with a, a new legend that has nothing to do with the old series, mm -hmm. and it revolves around these three masks. All right. The Mask of Creation, the Mask of Control, and the Mask of Ultimate Power. And right. the Mask of Ultimate Power is a forbidden mask that was created by the forbidden merging of all six elements into one mask, and it began to tear the island apart. It was oh, a mask okay. of destructive power. Yeah. Um, then. All right. <laughs> then. Game of Thrones. All right. Spoilers for a series that literally died. A, a series that is no longer in the public consciousness only one year after the finale aired. And you know what? That makes me really happy. I yeah. hate to be spiteful and bitter, but I'm so happy. They they ruined it so... I've never seen someone else ruin something so hard. They got what they deserved. They did. And so... Um... The way Game of Thrones was whittling down, you had you start the series with all these people, all these factions, and then these and factions they all just branch keep off. off. But then at the end, yep, it whittles down to three. Yep, it's Daenerys, Stormborn Targaryen, the Mother of Dragons, uh -huh. Life, okay. Creation, Creation. Then you have. Um, Cersei Lannister, uh -huh. who loses her children and is surrounded by death, mm -hmm. destruction. Yep, ultimate power. And then you have Jon Snow, who begins to lead the Night's Watch to keep balance, control, order between life and death. Yes, right. Uh huh. Okay, I'm seeing the pattern. And so, what was what was what what generation were we just exiting in Pokemon at the time? Six, which life, was life. Death, death and, and order yeah those three themes yep and then i looked down at my computer keyboard and what did i see control all delete <laughs> <laughs> oh no we've, told, we've solved the riddle oh god look at those spikes i need to stop laughing on this podcast. no it's okay you can laugh oh was it that Am I right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. So. I don't feel bad for Tim Buckley. <laughs> I don't know who that is. The guy who made the control all delete comic. Lost. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. So now I now I've I've presented this big topic of recurring themes for what was really just a very cheap punchline. Uh huh. But. 
you know, and I've, I've talked to other people about this, and of course, I don't remember what their responses were, but this this recurring theme of the of the control, yeah. life, death, and order, uh-huh. because of course there's a there's a conflict between life and death, creation and destruction. Yep. But there doesn't necessarily have to be an element of order nope. or a third party nope. bringing balance. But a lot of the time there is. That's a. We're, I know how we're gonna bring this back, but yeah, hell yeah, that's a that's an interesting thing that you that, that's an interesting pattern to notice because I think it's really easy to just make a life and death conflict and not have the third party because like why would you need one right right because um, obviously life is the good guy and life's they want to keep and, and they want to keep yeah. the balance between life but, and but death but like the first question that you have to ask if you are asking questions if you are in a position where you're going to ask questions about like a scenario like this it's like what happens if you kill death <laughs> huh what what happens then huh right or like what happens if you kill life huh yeah. what happens then well so to to reference sonic unleashed for the second time spoilers yeah. for the end of sonic unleashed light gaia simply has to arm wrestle dark gaia into going back to sleep yeah he and it's kill like it. a really weird anticlimactic kind of oh we're just gonna wake up every once in a while and then we have to go back to sleep we that's ha- the we whole have struggle to do this so that's a story with life versus death creation versus destruction without the element of order yeah because the order is nothing literally doesn't exist and to its credit i liked that in pokemon x and y if you're playing x version yeah it's like he's either in y he's going to use eveltal's power to destroy the world or he's going to use xerneas's power in x to curse you all with eternal life and yeah that's also viewed as a bad thing yeah it's horrible actually if you think about it oh and i've thought about it i've read that crack.com article mm-hmm. this is the referencing other creators episode isn't it this definitely is <laughs> But, uh, except for me. Call an ambulance, but not for me. We're looking at the cat right now, sorry. Sorry, I'll stop getting us distracted. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so, bringing back the order, though, right? You know what would suck? If you were on the playground, and, like, you just would, like, you guys were pretending, and you, like, just killed each other without any kinds of rules. That's not very fun, is it? Oh my god, the Game Master's the order yeah. guy. Yeah yeah we did it we did it that's how i was gonna bring it back i think our podcast is just a, a game of who can make sense of the discussion that's what our whole discussions have been the entire time right that was the inspiration behind the podcast that it's still cool to think about this kind of stuff and yeah. it's still cool to think about how like it's actually very cool to have an order guy in your life versus death climactic fight because there has to be both and someone has to come out here regardless of who they are and say there has to be both you idiots you goddamn morons but then in game of thrones they were like no there doesn't actually have to be both at all what if we got rid of all of them bye well and game of thrones was i think game of thrones got whittled down to such a simplistic theme when it was originally setting out to be something more interesting because it definitely the, was. the zombie stuff was different it was weird it was cool we had a face that was controlling the zombies and there was like a reason and ah, and, and then it was nothing and there was nothing it ended up being nothing so i i think that theme wound up coming about sort of for lack of anything more creative well also like the the the, the you know the mother of dragons just dist- like a life she died she ended up being nothing like yeah and she died she she died for nothing like well, her only decision was like hey you could have just not you could have just not done it, and it was supposed to. It was supposed to be like, oh, she's she's echoing the her forefathers yeah. because the Targaryens are all crazy, and then her descent into madness just didn't get enough time. wasn't believable. was poorly yeah. written. was poorly, you know. Well, and like, and then the other Targaryen in the show d- didn't. Yeah, he didn't go crazy. So no. like, there's precedent that like you didn't have to, but okay. <laughs> but that's because he had um, Baratheon blood, and that ties into this somehow. Well, he, they're not crazy. Wait. Wait. <laughs> no, but they're not, because none of those kids are Baratheons. Except for, didn't the guy burn his daughter? Oh, yeah, no, that Baratheon crazy. crazy. Okay. <laughs> I'm, well, like, I'm like, aren't they actually insane the whole time? That's all the Game of Thrones discussion I really feel like having. That's fine, I've only watched <laughs> from season four upwards, so that's all the discussion I can have to begin with. <laughs> oh, I don't know who Joffrey is, and I never want to see him. Don't tell me about him. <laughs> I think it's funnier this way. Oh, God. It helps that the show became comedy at the end. Zing. <laughs> it's so sad, man. It's so sad. I'm it's, still sad. I'm, like, let's talk about stuff that, like, it sucks that happened the way it did. 
because like I'm sad about a lot of stuff. You're just gonna get us back to Pokemon and Sonic. I'm not gonna talk about Pokemon and Sonic. It's okay if we talk about Pokemon and but Sonic, but I'm just gonna. pointing out the fact that that's yeah. where this thread will inevitably no, land we, we, us. No, we've talked about that enough already. I want to talk about why Steven Universe the movie was the good end to the show. <laughs> oh, we didn't need future. <laughs> Boy, we just we didn't we we you could have stopped. All right. Sp- Spoiler for Steven Universe from this point forward. Have you seen Future? I've seen Future. I've yeah. seen every shred of Steven Universe yeah. media. Yeah, like, you know how it just kind of didn't have to happen? It really didn't. No. Now, okay, <laughs> I would argue that diving into Steven's PTSD yep. over... Forgive me if I'm not using that word properly. No, it's, 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 it's his PTSD. That diving into Steven's PTSD was a neat idea. It's a neat idea. It didn't get enough time. No. And it didn't... It, it kind of came out of nowhere and got resolved by nothing. And it, yeah, there wasn't as much weight to anything like, that like happened. There are, I think there are 16 episodes of Future, right? Is it only, is it, is I it think that it's many? 16. God, I thought it was 10. There were eight and eight. It was two, like, seasons, quote unquote, of eight episodes. Okay. And the first eight episodes don't even talk about that. The first eight episodes are like tying off loose ends with everybody else in the show. Mm. So then you're going to come at me... With eight episodes of, uh oh, Steven actually has had PST the, PTSD the whole time, and now it's like flaring up. And I'm like, well, maybe you could have spent the first eight episodes kind of slowly building that up instead of just ignoring it, huh? Oh well. Oh well. And I think that that's kind of the downfall of all these really these things that we really like, is that you not you wrap something up in a nice neat little bow, and instead of doing something new, you you like you break into the bow. You, you rip open the present. And I don't know how to make an an- analogy of this. It's just that. It's nonsense. Yeah, that's what it is. You, you, you take something really nice and you mangle it for no reason. You know what happened? A cool kid said it wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> and so they had to make it cool again. And they made it worse. <laughs> I can't believe that they would do... like. It makes me really upset. And that being said, I'm in the same position with Steven Universe. Like, I've never watched the first, like, 20 or so episodes. And with that, I would argue that you don't need to. Yeah. There are really cool moments in the first couple of episodes. I think that Giant Woman is still one of my favorite episodes of the show, even now. All right. When the serious stuff picks up and mm-hmm. the show has a plot. But, by and large, yeah. It's <laughs> a lot of nonsense, and Steven is kind of insufferable in the first, like, half right. of the first but season. But yeah, like, from everything that I've seen, I love all of it. Like, I love yeah, all those episodes from where I started. I love the movie a lot. I think it does a lot for the series. And I think it wraps it up really... Even the, the movie kind of frames it as a show, as, like, a play that the characters are putting on. Like, they do, like, the whole opening bit where they recap the entire series for everybody who might not have seen it, but who's watching the movie. Like, and then at the end of the movie, they wrap it all up, and I'm like, okay, I believe that these characters have lives outside of this story. And then the the future is like, no, actually, their whole world revolves around these past two years. And I'm like, I don't like that anymore. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's lots of little nitpicks that people made about the movie, but I think by and large, uh, it it does its job. I think it does it really well. I think it's a really good farewell to the show, and then they're like, actually, money. Yeah, and I think I think it's paramount in um, in future by the way that the core gems are utilized yeah amethyst pearl and uh garnet have literally nothing to do because their character arts are way past done (laughs) way past done because we had to redo all of them for the movie yeah and we'd redone a couple of them throughout the series Mm -hmm. how many times did ruby and sapphire have to get back together how many times did they have to fight after never fighting before how many times (laughs) had we had to remind amethyst that it's okay to be here how many times have we had to watch pearl suffer (laughs) it's over isn't it it is. It should have been. She had a whole song about it. <laughs> Actually, though, Pink Diamond was the worst, and we're going to teach you right now. And all the diamonds are... F- They're okay. Fine. They were, you know, genocidal maniacs, but now they just want to love the cute rubber girl. You build Yellow Diamond <laughs> up as this really threatening villain. And She's you actually build... a clod. <laughs> she's well i mean yeah. she can be both she can be Paramount both. canonized that she's both she, yeah like the direction that the series was going was cool because you had yellow diamond as threatening and you had blue diamond as kind of like a, a poor source of reason 
yeah, and like mildly, mildly the emotional core of the diamonds, and then light as this like impenetrable foe that we don't even know about. Yeah, and well, at the end of the show, we know, and we know that she's like insane. Right, but then whoopsie daisy, pink is the worst. worst. Pink made all the problems, not mm-hmm. the not the. I mean, what the diamonds were doing wasn't necessarily good, but like pink made them exacerbably worse. <laughs> By being an impetuous child about it. Well, she made them worse, and then she made more problems that they wouldn't have made in the first place. Oh, she also needlessly caused the suffering of others. Yeah. What a wild show. Yeah, and that's why I like it so much. And that's why I hate what they did with it so much. Yeah, that's fair. I I wouldn't say that I was happy with the way everything ended. The movie felt lukewarm to me, and there was Stephen boning his dad. That was very awkward for that moment. And them doing, like, uh... That... Yeah. Pearl, Pearl in that scene is, like... Something super is definitely uncomfortable. wrong. It's not, it's not pretty, like... If I wanted to read hentai, I'd just read hentai. Yeah, except, like, someone got it through all the screening and decided to put it in a film. Very strange scene. Mm-hmm. Very uncomfortable scene. But, like, there's a fun rubber girl... Yeah. She's fun. I I like Spinel a I lot. I like Spinel, yeah. I've listened to other friends a billion times. It's really good. I literally did a redraw of, of Deoxys' Spinel <laughs> yeah. singing to James Turner about how he's made Pokemon that... Oh, James, that are faster than him. That are faster than him. <laughs> you made what? <laughs> really? <sighs> Poor Deoxys. Poor Pokemon, dude. Yeah, I know. Well, the, here you go. They finished Deoxys' story arc in Omega Ruby and yeah, Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, they did. And then they trashed him. They did. <laughs> they did my boy Deoxys like they did Steven Universe Future. <laughs> they, they they wrapped up everybody's arcs. They wrapped up Pearl's arc and then they trashed her. <laughs> oh. She had one episode. And it was like, I like that she has a bunch of friends and gets a lot of people's numbers and is like a huge player. But like. <laughs> yeah, one. Wow. Well, and that's a cool thing, because it's like... She finally got over it. It was over! And once she got over it... Yeah, everyone loves her. Right. And that was cool. That was yeah. cool. Great ending Pearl, for Pearl. Pearl's like, everyone loves me. And she's like, I know. Yeah. And, and then Garnet and Amethyst wind up just not doing anything, not changing, not mattering. They didn't need to. They, they finished their arcs. Yeah, exactly. But, like, why are we still here then? It's like it's like the ending of a game. Like a game ends and it says the end, and then you're like watching it, like okay, I need more, and like it, it's over. Like we. Yeah, I think there's a particular game developer that that makes fun of you for starting this game up again if you've done. Yeah, it more like than maybe someone times. who's like, uh, don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> yeah, huh? He knew. He knew the whole time. He could have saved Steven Universe. <laughs> I don't think he could have. He didn't play Rebecca Sugar and Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> that's really obtuse. <laughs> it is really obtuse. Someone's gonna get that though. Oh yeah. God, like if there are any good takeaways from that game, I think that's one of them. Is that like there's a good time to stop something? <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Moving on. We can move on. Yeah. Moving right along. <laughs> moving right along. Gosh. But that's a. Uh, I guess I kind of want to wrap it back to order at that point because like. You know, there was no one telling these... I guess maybe there there was someone, but there was no one telling these execs, like, you know you can stop this at any time, right? You can you can wrap this up. We can put an end to it. That needs to be a job. That needs to be a part of the editing process. I, I, I believe so. But hey, like, but I it think, will still make them money. Yeah. So there's no reason to stop. Yeah, there's no... If There would be a job that would stand in the way of profit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and no one wants that right now. Because <laughs> no one's going to pay somebody to say, Stop. <laughs> Stop. I know there's still money to be milked out of this, but you're going to make the fans sad. You're going to make the fans sad. You're yeah. going to cause unnecessary suffering. You're going to alienate your fan base. But they'll watch whatever you put out next anyways. Except for me. I won't do it. <laughs> the guys who, whatever they make after Game of Thrones, I'm not going to watch it. I hear they lost their um. Their they deal. lost their Star Wars deal. Hallelujah money. It's almost like there were consequences to their actions. <laughs> Shout outs to Sega Sammy Sonic fan who you, your actions will have consequences. Is that the kid's that name? Sa- Sammy Sonic fan. Oh. He's really cool about it now. He does talks and he references it. 
that's good. I yeah. guess there's only one way to go. Yeah, it's no, lean he, into it or die. He, he, he leans into it. He understands what he was like. But, like, he had a point. Your, your actions have consequences. Yeah. You're going to push your, your, you're going to push this narrative to its, like, breaking point because it has nothing left for you. You got to alienate everybody who ever liked it. And now what do you have? Nothing. <laughs> Something that was like literally the biggest IP in the world is out of the public consciousness forever. <laughs> At least Steven, they're still using them for like commercials. Yeah. And they're kind of ignoring what happened in future too. And they're like using the the, the gems as like vocal mouthpieces for like really important discussions. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. Um they made an ad recently that was like a Pearl was teaching a human class about the history of the light bulb. And, like, it's like, okay, this is the guy who invented the light bulb. That's it. And then, like, the, the in, in universe, the taping cuts, and Pearl's like, that's it? Really? You're not going to talk about the guy who invented the filament so that a light bulb works? Uh, was he erased from history because he's black? Oh. And Pearl, like, goes off oh. on the people who assi- who hired her to make this short. I take back my comment about saying I'd seen every shred of Steven Universe oh, yeah. material. No, what? Pearl, like, goes off about how this guy was erased from history because he was black, even though the light bulb wouldn't work without filament, which wow. this guy invented. So, oh. uh, I apologize, fans, I'm not doing this man justice because I don't remember his name. But like well, we're not taught his name. Yeah, exactly. So you can't blame but us. But yeah, so Pearl. We'll look it up after this. Patch notes for episode. <laughs> oh, uh... I got a patch note after we're done with this discussion. Oh, good. Uh, but yeah, like they're using the Steven Universe characters now to talk about very important socio-political <laughs> topics. Well, they've become what the people who complained about them in the first place complained about. Hey, them you being. might as well lean into it, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this show's just trying to push progressive issues. So. Well, Cool. So, Good. Yeah, cool. All like, right. We've got a character that's literally a gay marriage. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the whole character. That's her character. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's she's two girls kissing the character. <laughs> <laughs> and then France was like, let's we'll censor that. Yeah. And I then, think a, a, a couple of Asian countries censored it too. Yeah. France is the one that came to mind yeah. because France also decided to make those two gay Sailor Scouts cousins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my... Oh yeah, we're just cousins. So I think Mercury and Jupiter or Uranus, I think. It's two of the outer senshi. Yeah. Uh, uh, Neptune and Neptune and I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah. I, my as much as I care deeply about Sailor Moon and its fans, I can't remember I, a yeah. look of it. Yeah. I don't even remember the cat's name, Luna. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember G- Chibi Moon. Is that her name? Uh, I think in one language, yeah. I yeah. remember her as Mini Moon. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so patch notes patch notes are a po- part of the podcast that we sometimes do yes here is the it's patch a, notes section of this episode it is a nebulous section of the podcast last week we mentioned a megas xlr and that I, was last week yes or not well, last week for the people who listen to this podcast oh yeah and i mentioned how there were no cool figures of it uh there <gasps> oh <laughs> uh, there is one very 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 expensive collector's figure for it and i don't want to buy it but there was a there was a mold for an action figure that was attempted. Uh, it was made as like a proof of concept, but uh, Cartoon Network never funded it because they didn't think it was going to make enough money. Well, so they shot themselves directly in the foot with that one. Yep. Um, so that being said, uh, after Magus ran, there is like a collector. I think it's like a vinyl figure. It's like very large and well done. It was made for Comic Con. Okay. Like one of those kind of figures. Ah, uh, so Comic Con exclusive. Yeah, it's very expensive, and I don't want to have to buy it. Gotcha. Uh, like I guess while we're on the tangent of toys, Mega Sex XLR didn't get a toy, but Fully Cooly did. Fully Cooly got multiple action figures. Fully Cooly <laughs> was six episodes. Yeah, exactly. Like, why did they give action figures? <laughs> and this was before like the vinyl. Like these are action figures. They were meant to be like posed and right. played with, not vinyl figures that are meant to stand on a on a on a desk or something like. I don't understand the logic there. I really don't. I guess Gynex had Gynex money. But like... I mean, I guess. Hot off the heels of Eva. I suppose that's what they had. Eva got some weird merchandise that it didn't need. And they still do to this day. You can get Gendo-themed toothbrushes. So you can pretend you're the world's worst father while brushing your teeth. Uh, Someone made a video. Uh, 
shout outs i'll put them in the description because like i like i'll, I'll shout out smaller creators i know about but i don't know their name off the top of my head i'll put them in the description of wherever you're listening to this someone made a video about uh is it possible to live off of eva related merchandise <laughs> <laughs> that uh that is a topic that only comes about when it becomes readily apparent that there's an absurd amount of merchandise for this thing that doesn't need it exactly uh i think I don't think anybody's made this video, but I think it would probably be obvious. I think it's definitely possible to live off of Pokemon merchandise. Oh, for sure. You could even get uh, Pop-Tarts and SpaghettiOs. Yeah, yeah. Pop-Tarts, SpaghettiOs, ramen, all <laughs> Pokemon themed. So you'd have food, plenty of food. I think there's more cereals now, too. Like, I have, one, I had some for breakfast today. Oh. <laughs> like, you didn't get that retro off eBay. That's, like, current? Yeah. It's a new one. It's got, like, Grookey on the side of it. Oh, cute. Uh, but there are no other... There's no character marshmallows it's just like lightning bolts okay it's like berry blast or i don't berry bolt that's what it's called <laughs> of course it is it's fruit flavored marshmallows and i don't know how to feel about it i don't know if you've ever had a fruit flavored marshmallow you know how i'd feel about it pre-diabetic oh no <laughs> so yeah and then pokemon's definitely got enough clothing for you right clothing. down to the underwear yeah i think there's a toothpaste probably and a toothbrush you got cups and plates and spoons, I suppose. It's probably a spoon. There's gotta be enough Pokemon cutlery. I remember seeing it as a kid. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, if you get, like, old Pokemania stuff, you could find Pokemon merch of anything. I think they've probably centralized a little bit right now. Uh, they definitely have. They pulled back a little bit. But at the at its peak... There's an alarm clock. Oh, yeah. There's a car. There's that Pikachu Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, my God! But I don't know if you can get Pokemon oil <laughs> from, uh. like, a gas station. But you could probably pay for it on a Pokemon debit card. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I was about to make a Pokemon bank joke, and then I realized that that's not the same thing. Oh, no, it's a different kind of bank. <laughs> <laughs> Which might end someday. Uh, all those Pokemon are going to get deleted. <laughs> thank goodness I never bothered with any of that stuff. I just remake my teams every game. Oh, no. <laughs> if I want to be sentimental, I can just boot up the old game. It's true. And I... People make business. You could make you could make money for your Pokemon debit card off of fixing old save files for people's old Pokemon games. Yikes! You could live off of Pokemon and only Pokemon. <laughs> I bet. Th you think there's a Pokemon casket? <laughs> <laughs> homework, homework for next episode. <laughs> Google if there is a Pokemon casket. <laughs> uh, a little too morbid. I'm just. I'm just imagining that somebody probably had one custom made for a child who died, and we're oh, gonna no. we're gonna we're gonna stumble upon oh, a story no. we don't want to read. Gonna, I'm gonna feel really bad about that. I know that that happened with like a Juggalo family. Like they had a baby that died, and like they made a custom Juggalo casket for their baby. I remember seeing that. Oh no! Why do you know that? You know who I am. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. This this is the same. Uh, juggalo following stemming from a, a group that's that's a whose member is a very proud father of a furry now so i guess they're <laughs> yeah i guess it's like less unreasonable for us like internet dwellers to be acutely aware of everything that goes on with the insane clown posse and their following well i am also uh you know oh the yeah. home stuck in the room right <laughs> Uh, speaking of things, that are they insane? Poorly. Are they insane clown posse adjacent? Yes. Oh. Uh, the, the 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 clown troll. Their their following is the ICP. I'm having a hard time with I, I, what you've just told me. I thought you were saying I'm having a heart attack. I'm also maybe that. Uh, and now the creator posts on Instagram in clown makeup. So that's certainly uh, a thing. It's very ICP adjacent. The I think the care I think I think I was about to say Sweet Bone and Hello Jeff. I don't remember their names. Uh, Violent J. And oh, and Shaggy Too Dope. Shaggy Too Dope. They become the presidents of the of of America in one of the timelines of Homestuck. Oh, yeah. Hey, you want me to make a really stupid joke right now? Yes. Uh, <laughs> shout out to our favorite small time creators. Okay. Shaggy Too Dope <laughs> and Violent J. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put them in the description yeah <laughs> you may not have heard of them i'm just kidding i <laughs> for for what it's worth i i have mostly ever had like 
mild to neutral experiences with Insane Clown Posse and their music. I have no ill will towards anybody who actually classifies themselves as a juggalo. I'm just referencing media that depicts them as, like, literal clowns on the internet. Sure. But, no, I I hold no ill will to someone who self-identifies as a juggalo. And this disclaimer disclaimer is not out of fear or anything. Oh, no, it's it's out of respect (laughs) more than anything. Because I want to tell this person, like, I don't think they're less of a person for, like, the music they like. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> a weird place to kind of crash land the conversation. Well, I've kind of, yeah, I think I've definitely nosed dive this conversation right into a crater. We've kind of removed ourselves from the context of what we were talking about. Oh, it was inevitable. I mean, we, we basically, we basically play a game of chicken with the topic. We, we definitely do. And I think I, I'm the one that ran into traffic and got hit by a car today. <laughs> Our podcast is just us as kids sitting or standing on a sidewalk of, of a busy intersection and we're playing chicken by running across the street. Is you that know, still cool? Is that one of the games you played as a kid? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, because you're from... I'm from California. Where there are busy streets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? And so, uh, you know, I'm today I'm the one that got hit by a car, but you know what really would have uh, made that game a little better, as in, like, none of us risking getting hurt, is if there was someone making rules. Some sort of order, if you want. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, I'm gonna bring this... I'm gonna... Bring it home. I'm not bringing it home. Bring it home. No. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna finally reveal the, the thing that's been plaguing your references all day. Oh, no. We sat and watched all of Box Peak. Oh, no! Yeah, like, we have! Right before... So, shout-outs to our favorite independent developers and, and cr- artists and creators... I'll link Box Peak in the uh, description below. Greatest thing I didn't know I needed in my life, but, but Box Peak follows the the same principle of like Bakugan and Yu Gi Oh. Yep. You know, I know it's it's directly inspired by Pokemon. You said, mm-hmm. but there are those worlds. And actually, while watching it, the most recent thing of that genre I had watched was Mega Man Battle Network, like five years ago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, and I didn't get very far because I was just like I had already seen Metabots and Beyblade. Yeah. So you you know what this is about. Yeah. But. Box Peak does that kind of idea where the whole world is consumed by this trivial game. Yep. And it takes it to something that could be played on the playground. Mm -hmm. And so what if uh, United Chicken Federation... Oh um, my god. (laughs) The UCF. (laughs) Yeah, where where there are internet, you know, internet rules and regulations. It's, uh, uh, this kind of just becomes double dog, doesn't it? Yeah. Everything's already been made, I guess. There's nothing new under the sun. No. Except for Box Peak. <laughs> but I think I think uh I think it's very feasible to see any of those things crop up. And here, whoops, I am gonna bring it home. Um, because what if uh, the stupid little hand game, the yeah. the, the bubblegum bubblegum, you know had rules. And popped off into a new life. Like there's there's people who there's arm wrestling competitions. There's ping pong there's, tournaments. Yeah, I mean Ping pong, I forget that ping pong is very silly in concept. Yeah. It's, it's very like, you could make a ping pong table at home with some stuff if you wanted to. Yeah, and it, the, the, the ball is like a very light little plastic thing. Yeah. Like, double plastic? Double plastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference for all, all one of you who's seen Box Poke, who's listening to this. You got you have to watch it now. Um, But yeah. Uh, cause what if, uh, like what's the dumbest thing we could think of that would pop off and become the next like world sports adjacent? Oh my goodness. I've never troubled myself with that before. Yeah. But it's, te- the, the temptation has been hanging there all yeah. our lives. Cause we grew up with Yu-Gi-Oh and, uh, and there are Pokemon world tournaments. Right. They're not, they don't consume the earth. Not as much as the series itself does, but there are <laughs> like, yeah. What did it take for the world of Yu-Gi-Oh to become so... I don't know. Like, what happened? Like, if Duel Monsters is the most important thing in the world in Yu-Gi-Oh, how did that happen? How is anybody skinny? I mean, like, they don't eat. Sure. There's also (laughs) no incentive to be active. But there's also, like, there's a burger place that Taya works at? Anju? I don't know how you know her. Some people know her as her Japanese name or her English name. Oh. Yeah, her Japanese name is Anju. Okay. 
Uh, That's so, a weird thing to localize to Taya, which and, is still like an ambiguously... Yeah, like Joe Nochi at least kind of goes to Joey. His name was just Joe before this? Joe Nochi. Oh, Joe Nochi is one name. Yeah. Okay, sorry. There was, no, I yeah, couldn't his, tell if that was no, two names or one. His full name is Joe Nochi. So Joey kind of works. Sure. Easy localization. Yeah, and Yugi is still Yugi. Um, but I don't get how you get Taya from Anju. I think they just don't care because she's a supporting care. female character and they all get treated like whatever. Yep. Nobody right. will care. Nobody from Japan And everybody wants else to be... is a pun. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or have Bandit in your name. <laughs> first, first name, name Bandit. is Bandit. <laughs> Last name Keith. You know, from the Keith family. <laughs> from the family of Keiths. <laughs> Oi, vey. So, okay. Dumbest thing we can centralize all of entertainment around. And I think running out into traffic might be it. <laughs> yeah, like... Well, I mean, like, ultimate... Like, American Ninja Warrior is just like a guy runs through a really hard playground. <laughs> <laughs> and you try to do it real fast. Well, they have parkour tag now. Okay. That's a whole thing, like extreme tag. They have an obstacle course set up with, like, a... I don't know, it's, like, so many feet by so many feet with uh -huh. a bunch of stuff in it. And it's... And, like, a tire... It's tag, but you're doing. You have to do parkour, okay? Because how else are you gonna navigate it? Yeah. But it's just tag. It's literally playground tag with the most daring kids. <laughs> I think that's it then. Yeah. The the, the 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 dumbest thing that could have been like rules lawyered into being a thing that adults care. That's what makes it an adult thing. Wrapping back around to the beginning, D and D is an adult thing because there's rules. Oh. Tax evasion is a real thing because there's an adult rules. thing because there's rules. There's rules and you're breaking them. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how Yoshi gets away with it. <laughs> Bring it back to Yoshi. Yeah, wow, that's two Yoshi references in one podcast episode. I don't really like Yoshi that much either. No, 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 no. I loved Yoshi's story growing up and like that's one of the N64 games my mom will still reference. Oh, okay. But like, yeah, I mainly just hate Yoshi now because of Smash. Why would you hate Yoshi? Because Yoshi's a tough character to play against. Oh, I guess so, yeah. He's they like, made him really good. <laughs> and everybody who plays Yoshi, I've met, really knows good what they're him. doing. Right. <laughs> and Yoshi's just ridiculous for no reason. He's very good now, actually. Yeah. He's one of, like, the... Him and Bowser are, like, the swan song... Or, like, the, the underdogs of, of Smash Brothers. Like, they sucked in their debut games and, like, the get couple of games that came after. Yeah. But, like, slowly but surely, they've, like, worked themselves into, like, being incredibly good. <laughs> They're like, hey, how come these how come these two reptiles from Mario games suck in Smash? They decided to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. They were both hunched over, like, actual reptiles. And then, like, hmm, what if they actually, like, stood up like a person? Oh, oh no, they're good. Yeah, it's that it's that proper blood flow to the brain from the spine or something. I think that's what it is. What were we just on? Shoot. Oh, the rules. Yeah, the rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what makes it an adult thing. So I think that I think that there's definitely an alternate universe where this tag game is the biggest deal. Because Instead of, of baseball. Imagine, imagine if that came about a couple generations ago when, mm -hmm. like, tag was all kids could do. Yeah. Um, well, imagine if, like, the baseball didn't ever happen, right? And it was just tag. Yeah. So we'd be having, like, tag pods right now because we're, uh, to date the podcast, COVID is a thing that is happening in the world right now. And so professional sports, being the incredible money makers that they are, are still going on. They're just creating their own little bubbles where they're trying to prevent their players from getting infected to varying success just so that people could be at home watch the sport um, oh, has that been variably successful? Yes. There have been whole teams that have been infected despite the bubbles. <laughs> I hate so, to laugh about that, but uh, like it's... I'm not going to laugh, or I'm not going to be upset about laughing about it, because like they deserve it. I laugh <laughs> because it's such a like, it should be of surprise to nobody. Yeah, surprising nobody. Yeah. It only works sometimes. But yeah, imagine if instead of baseball being a huge American institution, it was tag. Like, yeah. And I mean, you know, you think about baseball, you boil it down, it's still incredibly silly. A bunch of guys throw a ball around, hit it with a stick. The thing that keeps me from professional sports is there is there is a level of obtuse nature to the rules uh -huh. that I simply cannot... I can't grasp it. Like, who sat and was like, 
Here are the dimensions of the stick you can use to hit the ball that is also made of this material exclusively. This is the this is the area, this is the invisible square that doesn't actually exist that you must pitch the ball into that determines whether it is a strike or a ball. And of course, you know, over time, the regulations are in order for something to function, there's gonna be regulations. I just feel rules. like baseball and football are so obtuse. Football especially. Football especially. I can't I can't wrap my head like I as someone who enjoys in- incredibly obtuse stories and games, I can't wrap my head around how obtuse the rules for football are when it looks so simple. You right. throw the ball to someone who runs to run it to the other side of the field. I don't understand what's so hard about that. And uh that's why I've always been kind of attracted to like moderately attract like i'll watch soccer if it's on yeah for Soccer's... no other reason than the fact that i can readily digest what's it's happening. pretty simple there's a couple of rules in soccer i think i'm not sure actually there's more like penalty stuff i think yeah it's like yeah don't touch the ball with your hands and don't run into people don't run into someone yeah <laughs> and don't I think tackle them uh, yeah i guess in soccer you can't tackle each other like soccer's rules are heavy on penalty not on like how the game is yeah. functionally it's like played. get the ball out on the field someone kicks it okay now get it to the goal that's it Goalie can touch the ball with their hands. Nobody else can. Easy. Mm-hmm. Done. Done. Mm-hmm. That's soccer. Yeah. You can kick the ball really far without touching it for a while. Dude. You can also do that. Like you can just let it sit there. What if? What if nobody kicks the ball? <laughs> <laughs> no one. That has literally never happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's that same question. Oh. And so, and that, and then again, the other, the only other thing that I, that I've, I'm mildly into that it could even remotely count as a sport is a kind of like bowling. Yeah. Because there's no two ways about what happens yeah. in bowling, partially because your scorekeeper is a machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also like. I, I I felt the same way about soccer because it's also like the only sport that the whole world comes together to play. If you think about that. Even the United States begrudgingly. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> soccer is the only. I guess football. We'll call it football. Real football. <laughs> the yes, re- the real football. Football. The real football. It's the only sport that the entire world comes together to play that isn't part of, like, separate from the Olympics. Well, there's war. Oh yeah, war. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a little too dark. Sorry. <laughs> that's um, okay. And the Olympics are fun too, because yeah. like here we're sort of on a weird sports tirade, and I can keep this going yeah. for the rest of our episode. This mm-hmm. is just a weird sports tirade. Well, we. Uh, rules yeah for games that kids play oh oh it yeah. makes it an adult thing no whoops this is completely on par with the theme of the episode um and so the olympics are always fun because yeah. it's a little snippet of a bunch of easy digestible like yeah there's there are very like, few olympic events aside like i can think of off the top of my head i straight up don't know what curling is or how it got popular but I, most of these events are easily understandable curling is like we made an absurd situation and can you do it so curling, to my knowledge, right, they have a rock, and you're going to slide the rock across. You have to get the rock from Stop. one side, from one side of, so, so there's a Don't rock. Don't dissect curling. There's I'm gonna... a rock and some ice, okay? <laughs> and then you, the point of curling is to get the rock from one side of the ice to the other without touching it. That's it. <laughs> I think that's what curling is. Why do they have brooms? Does it make the ice easier or harder for the rock to slide on? It makes on? it easier. Because you're, you're, you're creating friction to move the rock. But see, curling... Curling, I could absolutely see being a game kids came up with in their backyard. Yeah, it is. And it somehow made it to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, the, the shot put. Which is to throw a big ball. <laughs> but at least shot put is in the spirit of like, here's a guy who can heft up fucking ball with one arm like that's what the olympics are it's like here you know who can run the fastest who can throw a thing the hardest jump in a really cool way yeah who can (laughs) jump the coolest right long jump high jump or the 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 ribbon thing oh yes like who can make the ribbon look the coolest (laughs) lord of mercy Oh. That's what figure skating is, I think. It's like, who can do the coolest spin on the ice? Well, figure skating is balance in, yeah. a, in an absurd situation. Yeah. And like, I think that it's when you get to curling that you lose me, where it's just an absurd situation, yeah. and there's no feat of like the physicality. Feet, the feet is doing it. <laughs> like, the feet is signing up for curling. Yeah. Like, 
their feet is like understanding how to get the rock to move without touching it. If there is a if there is a curling enthusiast or God forbid a curling competitor that's listening to this for whatever reason, please get please, to us. Please get to us. We would love to talk to you. We'll have you on the show. We mm-hmm. won't make fun of you. We, we really just want to know. Also, locks in. I won't make fun of you. I'm, I'm I'm actually serious. I would love to have you on the show. <laughs> and so, okay. So I was bored to death at my last ever bartending job, which right. is me citing my bartending history for the third time this episode. Hey, you did it. And I was I was working at a casino which had a sports bar zone. All so right. I had to watch sports. Mm-hmm. And I had to pretend to know about sports. Yep. But there was one day where ESPN had on, like, alternative sports. Okay. So I sat and with like a straight extreme face. Extreme frisbee. Well, in that vein, yeah. But... Amongst them, I sat and straight up watched sumo wrestling. Oh, okay. For two hours. Yeah. And it was radical. That's rad. But they also had the roll the wheel of cheese down the hill and chase it. Oh, cheese roller from Neopets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, I'm going to go throw up my reference real quick. Because <laughs> you've spoiled it. Um, and they had spike ball. Have you ever what, heard of spike ball? Spike ball. All right, so imagine if basketball and volleyball had a baby... Okay. So you're in a you're in like a small sand ring. Okay. And there is a small hoop at the middle of it, and it's on the ground. Okay. And you and your opponent have to spike a ball into that. Into the into the, the hoop that's on the hoop ground. That's on the ground. Okay. It's like it's literally like a basket. Okay. And I don't think I registered how the actual like interplay goes because I only gathered that you spike the ball into yeah like who's the gonna thing. like if there's only one person on your team and that's you. Who's going to stop you yeah, from spiking I, the ball? I don't remember how counterplay worked. Yeah. I don't remember how you get the ball from the other person. But to its credit, though, I mentioned it. I didn't know its name. I mentioned it and called it Spike Ball. And someone was like, oh, yeah, Spike Ball. So to oh its my credit, God. it is incredibly digestible in theory. In name. <laughs> because it literally is named for what it looks like. It just like. sounds like an arcade game you play at Chuck E. Cheese. Right. It's like, oh, okay, shoot the hoop. Shoot 30 of them. Okay. Who's, yeah. There's nobody to stop me. <laughs> yeah, there's nobody to stop you. Right, so that's spike ball. And I'll take one more jab at football because football is the dumbest name ever. It's the dumbest name in For the American world. football it, because I, it is... I hate it. It is played mostly with your hands. Like pigskin would be a better name. Right. Which makes no... It still doesn't make any sense. But at least that's what the thing was yeah. once made out of. Yeah, and like because it, it it's identifiable. Like pigskin, oh, that's the weird game with the weird shaped ball. Right, as opposed to football, which, which is, is the like ball a and your feet game, yeah, but which is soccer. Yeah, which unless is soccer. it's in its country of origin which, and all the countries who care about it, which in which case it's football. Yeah, but not in the United States where football is. Yeah, hands and you use it. You use, you use your foot once a, an hour. <laughs> like, does the foot ever come into contact with the ball? Uh, sometimes. The foot's more likely to come into contact with the other players. Yeah, which is why football should be interesting. Like. Hear me out on how to make American football interesting, right? You're going to describe rugby, and I'm going to cut you off right now. Well, I guess I suppose I am, right? There, there is, um, there is rugby, and I believe there's an even more extreme, like extreme rugby. Yeah, like, where like, there's because rugby already has like barely like any padding. Football, American football, should be for people who don't value their lives, because what I want to see is blood sport. <laughs> I just want to see them kill each other. So over you, a dumb ball. So you want to see gladiatorial games with a with a pig no skin. no weapons, only ball right. and fists, and that's it. Like the goal is to get the ball over there. I don't care how you do it, <laughs> but I, I'm not going to give you any tools. So you got to think with your head and your fists, and, and that's we, it. And if we let a bunch of children play football, oh well, what's gonna they're gonna shoot laser pretend laser beams at each other, right? So that's that's how <laughs> that's how we're gonna tie that all together with a neat little bow. Child blood sport in place of football. Not children. They have flag football. They don't use the ball. They have flags. the The goal is just to grab the flag off your opponent, in any mean possible. <sighs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I haven't seen that show yet. Don't tell me about it. Good night, everybody. It's from Animaniacs. Oh, that's right. They there was rebooted. a reboot. Yeah. Dating the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, no, they rebooted that. I don't want to talk about it because I've never seen it. So. Yeah. Patch notes? Patch notes. Maybe we'll try and watch Animaniacs. Maybe. I've heard it's good. I don't know if I want to sit with it, though. Uh, yeah, me neither. <laughs>
I heard they got rid of a lot of the tertiary characters, which is why I liked it in the first place. Yeah. Like those pigeons. The pigeons were cool. And uh, the girl and her dog. And the, the squirrel. Yeah, the squirrels. I think the only characters are the Warners and... Uh, Pinky and the Brain. Pinky and the Brain. So, I guess, maybe. Patch notes, I'll have a more th- th- thorough opinion on it, whether or not I've seen it. <laughs> How about that? Anyway, it does sound like we're at the end of our rope, though. So we'll end the podcast here before we stretch it out into oblivion with nothing left to talk about. Tetherball! Why doesn't anybody play Tetherball professionally? Tetherball! <laughs>